Thank you. Thank you. This model is based on an old concept and a new finding to answer two questions. First, is there really a low energy resonance? Second, is the resonance width is wide enough to have contribution? The answer to both of these questions are yes. Ed Storms discovered this temperature dependence of excess heat power, like a straight line. It's very similar to that of diffusion coefficient e to the minus activation energy over temperature. This is elastic collision. This is non-elastic collision. How do they connect each other? Because of the resonance. The elastic scattering makes the resonance full developed. The resonance makes the deuteron wave function peaked at the nuclear surface. Then it will be captured by the nuclear surface to release excess heat power. So we call it resonant surface capture model. How do we express this model in quantum mechanics? In quantum me mechanics, any wave function inside the cold field can be the linear, linear composition of the red wave function and the black wave function. When the coefficient equal to zero, the black one will disappear. Then the red one peaked at the nuclear surface. Then it turned coolant repulsion into coolant attraction. That's the resonance. So we have to study the coefficient. The energy dependence of the coefficient can be learned from the cross-section. It's related with the real part, the imaginary part. So if we fit this cross-section with the hot fusion data, then we may have the information about this coefficient. Hot fusion data show that this coefficient can be separated into two parts, the coolant barrier parts and the nuclear parts. The data show that this part changes very slow, and this part changes is fast, but it's known already. This part is slow linear dependence. The imaginary part even constant. So we just use three parameters to fit this hot fusion coefficient. After 19 years study, we know 15 pair of fusion reaction can be fit by this three parameter formula. Now we can use this energy dependence to figure how they are related. In hot fusion, usually we think this nuclear part equal to zero, that's a resonance for the DT fusion. But there is another possibility, because this one at a low energy is a very slow variation, just like a constant. If this constant is very small, then even if this is very large, the product of this may be equal to one and smaller than one, then the coolant attraction will work. Indeed, if we know this denominator, we will know the elastic scattering cross-section. And we know the imaginary part also, then we know this. So from hot fusion data, we figure out the coefficient. 
then we can figure out the relationship between the elastic scattering and the non-elastic scattering. Let's give some idea about this from hot fusion to cold fusion, how this behavior changes. Let's look at this dotted line that's elastic scattering. The denominator is determined by a nuclear part and a column barrier part. Assume they equal to one, just at this 100 keV, we call it a resonance. When the energy is lower than 100 keV, the barrier part is much greater than the coefficient is much greater than one, so it's smaller. When the energy increase, this barrier factor reduce and the cross-section increase and further increase to the number four when this one, only one left. All other are smaller than one. How about the non-elastic part? We just add to the numer numerator. The numerator part after this resonance energy, W, both less than one, so only one in the denominator. The numerator will determine the downslope. Denominator determine the upslope. So when the energy goes very small, we will see this nuclear uh, barrier part changes very fast. So this upslope very steep, and this downslope very steep. So we understand at a low energy, it will be stepwise elastic scattering, and peakwise like a delta function, it's non-elastic scattering. Then how do they affect on the diffusion coefficient? We want to study the temperature defendants. So we average first to the max wearing distribution function. So the elastic scattering collision rate is this stepwise times the velocity times the max wearing distribution function. So the stepwise just change the lower limit of integration, and this integration come out the behavior just like the activation over the temperature. How about non-elastic? We know there will be a transition from the mother state to the daughter state. And this transition probability is proportional to the initial wave function value on the surface of nuclear boundary. This is proportional to the barrier factor. So indeed, this is a delta, peak, delta function, peakwise function. So this integration just gives the value on the resonance and the width. How about the width? Look at the width. This is stepwise. Then downslope is determined by the theta square, the barrier factor. So when this exponential change 1 over 2 log, then this energy change will make half width. So the half width is proportional to the resonance energy to the 3 half power. It's much greater than 1 over barrier factor. So this is the theory. Let's see the experiment. First, storms discover this blue line straight. We know heat after death experiment. Freshman raise the temperature and give 11 point for the excess power. We just plot the red line on the same plot from 31 degree to 65 degree. Almost a straight line, except a little fluctuation after the triggering. But 
this slope is diffusion coefficient for hydrogen or for deuteron in the palladium. But this one is for the de deuteron in what? We remember in the original electrolyte, there is heavy water and lithium uh, deuteroxide. After two weeks electrolysis, there might be a possibility for the lithium on the surface of cathode. So we look over the activation table. There is a number 4,600 Kelvin. It's very close to the slope, 4,593 Kelvin. However, this number is for this temperature range for lithium diffusion in the lithium hydride. What we need is deuteron diffusion in the lithium deuteride. However, on the table, I only have the data above 200 degree. They give the number deuteron diffusion in the lithium deuteride is close to the hydrogen diffusion in the lithium hydride. And it's close to the lithium diffusion in the lithium hydride. So we just borrow this number for the temporary. These are very close. Fortunately, my friend in material science will help me to find more data for this slope. This is from diffusion part. Let's see the nuclear data part. These two pictures for the proton plus lithium-6. This in the linear scale, this in the logarithm scale to the show this low energy part. The red line is by the theory, black point by the experiment. Because we believe if there is a low energy resonance at a high energy region, these contribution is almost zero. We remember the after the resonance, the coefficient become much smaller than one. So we just let these two coefficient equal to zero. Use only one parameter to fit this curve. This is R square. This is maximum relative error. It's a good fit. How about Deuteron plus lithium-6. We have similar picture. And lithium plus, uh, lithium-6 plus deuteron will produce two alpha. By fortune, my French friend, Bavarian, told me that <laughs> early, the last period of Imra, Pons did the enriched lithium-6 electrolysis experiment in the deuteron. And after several months electrolysis, suddenly a big amount of helium emerges. And for this P plus lithium-6, there is a support from Lipinski patent. By fortune, my friend Peter Hagelstein just told me he will do this experiment for replication. So the experiment show good sign for us. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is freshman pounds heat effect is a real effect. And high Z nucleus plus hydrogen or deuteron might be a candidate of fuel as well. <coughs> Many thanks to Tom Purcell for guiding me to lithium storms, big help for this straight line, and Professor Miles' derivation for this straight line using thermodynamics and iron theory, particularly the student of, former student of Professor Bibarian. Armanet Nicholas, he provided me all the information 
about activation energy. On Thursday morning, I'm going to talk about the third line, straight line, based on the gas loading experiment at Tsinghua University in three years. See you on Thursday morning. Uh, any question to Professor Lee? Um, Professor Lee, I uh, have a question. I, <clears throat> um, it was a very interesting talk. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, typically when we have this uh, uh, surface uh, uh, reaction, these are stripping reaction, um, particularly when the, uh, the energy of the impinging particle is very high. Is this uh, resonance due to the fact that we have low energy impinging particle in, uh, in our uh, system? Thank you for your question. I think this must be the question for most of you. When, Prof when Dr. Tom Purcell guiding me to lithium, he said this might be a stripping reaction for the deuteron with the lithium-6. When I was taught at the university, I was told only the incident energy is much higher than the deuteron binding energy. It's about 2.2 MeV. Then how this can, could be happen for the cold fusion? After five years study, we come out to this red wave function picture. Would you please repeat this slide show? Yes. You look at this red line. This is the wave function peaked at the nuclear surface. This black wave function just equal to zero almost on the nuclear surface. Usually, we think a resonance happens only the black one equal to zero. That's a DT fusion. We always do this. But look at this picture. When W, the coefficient equal to one. So this contribution is the same far away. But on the nuclear surface, the red one is much greater than this black one by a factor of barrier factor. Even if energy is one keV, this one is a big number. So only if this W is very large, then this red contribution will be suppressed by this normalization effect. That's why usually we always say W equal to zero, that's resonance. But W equal to one, we still have current attraction is instead of current repulsion. Is this answer your question? Yes. Thank you very much. Are there other oh, yeah, so one more question. Are there other low energy resonances that look promising? Are there other low energy resonances that look good? Are you studying other low energy resonances? Yes, yes. In, indeed, I studied more than 15 pair of hot fusion data. And the closest to our model is the P plus lithium. But for the D plus lithium-6, the fit is very good, but the data itself the relative error at low energy is 20%. So not all the data give you very strong uh, support. But the P plus lithium-6 is the best one making me happy. <laughs> and fortunately, Lipinski did more than 10 years work 
to find this kind of resonance. Hopefully, Peter will come big news for the next conference. Please. Hello, Zing Zong. Uh, first of all, um, nice to see you well again. Yes, yes. Um, in an earlier work that you've done, which, which leads to this, I think you've said that um, uh, isotopes with high neutron capture cross sections are likely to have this low energy resonance. And you've said that uh, we're now talking about the lithium-6. Do, do you think this applies to boron, for instance, cadmium, gadolinium, etc.? Yeah, that's a very good question. Indeed, my friend uh, read my abstract first and sent me a message to ask some question using his very good knowledge about the nuclear, if it's even, even nuclear or even other nuclear for the nuclear uh, atomic number. So. Oh. Indeed, the boron data for the low energy, because it's difficult to do, the error bar is very large. Uh -huh. So right now, we have no confident conclusion, just uh, working on this. Uh, indeed, uh, the good news is, previously, we always look for light nuclear fusion. Now, it looks me. The barrier factor is good for hydrogen number as well. As long as you are injecting the hydrogen or deuteron, we still have some benefit from resonance. That's the direction we should go. Thank you.